Okay, hello everyone. Uh, here for this league today. Just going to get into a deck deck. Uh, just real quick from the list I spoiled you yesterday, I realized that had 61 cards in it. Uh, so I've just turned one Sentinel's Eyes. Um, I think with Savage Swipe, I do want to be running three at the moment. It's, you know, it's good against Burn as well. You kill that creature, all of that. Um, so with the Auras, I've gone all in on the one mana Auras, which does leave us weaker to Blast Zone, Engineered Explosives, um, Chalice of the Void, all of that. Um, but at the same time, it really will allow us to um, utilize the strength of Savage Swipe with turn one creature, turn two aura plus Savage Swipe, kill the thing, get your attack happening. Uh, looking across to the sideboard, uh, I have still kept Path in the list, which might be a little bit greedy, but I think it's good. Um, you know, if we come up, up against Death Shadow, we definitely need a Path to Exiles. Um, I also reintroduced Suppression Field. We did see a lot of Ponza, so Suppression Field is going to be quite good against Ponza. Uh, I've got the Torpor Orbs here. Um, they might seem a little bit out of left field, uh, but quite frankly, I'm getting a little bit sick of losing to uh, Ad Nauseam. Like, that matchup used to be like 60% in our favor, and then it used to be 40% in our favor, and now it's like 10% chance of us winning. Um, 40 cents not in our favor, but you get what I mean. Um, so yeah, just just the combo of uh, Thassa's Oracle and uh, what's the one mana thing that goes on through? Um, Spoils of the Vault. Uh, that, that one mana combo um, is just like too good for us. So if we can stop the ETB from Thassa's Oracle uh, with just a random Torpor Orb, I think it's going to be as good as shutting off their mana sources with a stony silence. Um, that being said, I think we also do still want Gadok Teague to shut off the <laughs> Ad Nauseam line. So it's a really awkward matchup for us. And I hope running Gadok Teague and Torpor Orb uh, and then the one stony silence into it will help. Um, yeah, that's all I can say. I hope it will help. Uh, stony silence still being good against Tron and Eldrazi Tron when we're on the play. Um... And, you know, Suppression Field, we're going to be bringing that in against Ponza. Uh, rest in peace against anything that uh, runs Cryptic Command, basically. Cryptic Command, Mystic Sanctuary, um, the uh, Wurz Urza deck, if that's still around, all of that sort of stuff. So that's the league we're going to be running, and we're going to be getting into a league here today. Uh, have I got the right list? Green, white, boggles, green, white, yep. All right. And I've called it green white despite the fact I've put uh, obviously put uh, leyline in the main deck. Uh, I'm not running the leyline list. I just um, I don't know. Maybe I should have done that instead. Yeah, <laughs> mucking around with my filing system at the moment. So this Wambo combo guy that we've been losing to a few times in the last week uh, is up pretty high here on the leaderboard. Uh, season is ending quite soon. Uh, wait, one week and four days, so it's still a little while away, actually. Some players doing, like, very, very well, though. <clears throat> yes, sweet. This hand's amazing. Let's keep it. Um, we're on the draw. Uh, we've got protection against Thoughtseize. We've got a good hand against something like Burn. Um, I'm pretty happy to keep this hand. <clears throat> And against something like Ponza, we can even get basic lands too. Alright, looks like it's a Jun deck. Um, we got protection against Liliana too, so that's epic. I'm uh, going to start off with the Fetch Shock here. Because uh, Jun's not playing Lurus anymore, we do have to be a, uh, little, a little bit aware that they can end of turn 2, destroy our Ley Line, and then cast uh, Liliana on the turn 3. So I'll probably just be looking to play Grisspoon into Bogle this turn. Um... Snow Forest? Is that just for swag or something? Or is he running Dead of Winter? That's interesting. Alright, here comes the Tarmogoyfs. So that line's not going to be happening. Uh, what do we draw? Temple Garden. Uh, well, it is slightly more health efficient to... Uh, Shock in the Temple Garden here, since we do have a uh, an aura to play next turn off of it. We're just going to attack for two, 
Use our mana to play Slippery Bogle, pass it over. I don't want to get into some sort of funky line where I draw a one mana aura and I can't go aura daybreak while having the bogle on the field there. So I'll just take the extra point of damage or extra two points of damage, play the bogle out. All right, well, red and six isn't going to do very much here. Opponent's not got an aggressive hand at all. Uh, we're going to... We can kill this red and six. Oh, sweet. We draw Rancor. Uh, so what's our clock going to be here? Seven. Uh, we've got eight with the bogle. Attack for eight. Put him to nine. Yeah, I think we just ignore red and six and just attack him. Uh, Daybreak, Corona, attack for the win. Yep, cool. Opponents conceded off of that. Alright, so that was Leyline against Jund, everybody. Really, really nice. Alright, I think we want the Rest in Peace. Rest in Peace is basically a removal spell for their Tarmogoyfs. It can essentially remove two Tarmogoyfs as well. And it also stops their Crocs of stuff that they'll be looking to do as well. Um, rest in Peace, yeah, very, very good there. Um... Apart from that, anything else in the sideboard I think I might want? I think it's probably Path to Exile, if anything. I'm a little aura light here, so that's a bit unfortunate. Oh, maybe Suppression Field. Yeah, Suppression Field's going to be really good. Um... I almost want two of them, even though I'm on the draw. I'm going to minus a core spirit dancer for it, which might sound a little bit crazy, but, like, seems he's got Renin Six now. He's got all his fetch lands. He's got his Liliana. Like, suppression feels good. <laughs> it's really good. Uh, better than just random path, in my opinion. <clears throat> Alright, let's let's hope for another uh, ley line opener. Okay, so opponent is very obviously going to choose to be on the play here. Uh, hopefully we get yes, wait, I'll keep this hand. Uh, it's quite discard uh, resilient. And uh, yep, no ley line, but it's discard resilient. We've got the second creature for Liliana. Uh, yep, yeah, this is perfectly fine by me. The aura I want to most keep here is probably the Griffsburn. A little bit deceptive there, maybe for our opponent that will choose the wrong aura. Uh, but yeah, Griffsburn is way higher value to me right now than the Ethereal Armor. Uh, just because if he plays turn 2 Jump Blocker into Liliana, minus, I mean, we can fly over the top, kill the Liliana, right? So this is thinking a few turns ahead. Um... <laughs> But then again, we can get the Griff Spoon back from the graveyard at some point. So attrition-wise, he might be thinking, oh no, that's not a good card to take. Um, <laughs> I think tempo-wise, it's 100% the correct card to take. Alright, so quite a tough decision for my opponent here. Okay, so my opponent made the decision to take a Bogle, which is quite an odd decision if you ask me. Uh, maybe they've got this second discard spell and they're going to try and set up a Liliana here. So our poster boy is in the bin, but our backup lady has come out and is about to do her thing. <coughs> Uh, Stomping Ground, so no double discard here. I think it's just a Goyf. Yeah, it's a Goyf. <clears throat> Alright, we draw Razor Verge Thicket, so we'll get that uh, Scout on out now. We'll then Griff Spoon. Next turn, we can look at our Ethereal Armor, our Daybreak Coronet, and the match should be pretty short up after that point. <clears throat> 
We've drawn extremely well this game. Drawing, um... Uh... Mm, I think that's fine. Okay, he played Raging Ravine, so no Swamp. Here I've sort of got a read that he's got an Assassin's Trophy, but at the same time, if I play Hyena Umbra Attack, he blows up the Ethereal Armor, he, we, he takes three. Um, if he blows up the Griff's Burn, I'll still have a 4-4, four, four, but he'll have a 4-5. Four, five. <sighs> Do I just run Daybreak Coronet into that? That doesn't seem right at all. Um, could play Hyena Umbra Pass. That doesn't seem good. Alright, let's... Let's play out the Daybreak Coronet into this. Um, I think it's pretty obvious what our opponent's going to do. And then we can second main our Hyena Umbra onto our scout. Hopefully he gives us a Vigilance so we get the attack in, and then we've got Chump Block up. Alright. Wow. Abrupt Decay on the Ethereal Armor? Has he got a second one in hand? Well, I'm just going to fly over the top here. Get our life while we can. He could be setting up for Assassin's Trophy here. That might have been quite... Quite an okay line. Plague Engineer? Okay, that's fine. Naming Elf. Alright. This thing's got Death Touch, but we got Flying. Alright, uh, in case we draw a 1 mana aura, I'm just going to cycle this Horizon Canopy. Alright, we'll play out the uh, other Horizon Canopy here. If he Liliana... Oh, he'll just make us suck, but... <laughs> if he... was, uh, If he Crocs or discards us, then this is better. There we go. So he's still got Flying. We hit him down to 5. Uh, we got him on a 2 turn clock now. He's down to two cards in hand. Um, yeah, he's not done a huge amount of interacting with us this game, to be honest. It's like one Inquisition of Castle Lake, one Abrupt Decay, but Liliana here will just probably win him the game, so... We're not out of the woods yet. Um, Alright, we get the win. That's round one against Jund, everybody. Um, so we'll go onwards to round two here. Alright, we have found our game to opponent here. Uh, looks like we are on the draw again. Um, Alright, yep, this hand's good enough for me to keep, I feel. Uh, just off the strength of Leyline, I'm wanting to keep this, so we'll go ahead and keep it. <laughs> Leyline, cool. We don't have Totem Armor. It might be a little bit loose, but we're on the draw. Keeping keeping our resources is going to be good. Alright, it looks like Burn here. Prowess even. Okay, it looks like Prowess here. Alright, we'll just Windswept Teeth pass. Uh, I'm thinking we're going to try and get a turn 3 Core Spirit Dancer. Um... Alright, he's just cycling this crash through, getting in for 2 damage. The problem is, um, if we turn 2 Core Spirit Dancer, it's just like any burn spell kills it, sort of thing. Or Soul Scour Mage will make the trample, uh, sorry, make the infect, um, 
neg, neg one counters on it. Um, just go get ahead and get basic forest. Just in case there's something wacky like main deck blood moon. Alright, uh, we drew a bogle. I'm all about casting that bogle. Um, that's much, much better than going in on a core spirit dancer here. Um, here though, I do think that I want to, uh, leave the rancor on hand and get the draw trigger off of core spirit dancer next turn. I mean, if we draw any aura, we can just play double aura anyway. Um... And if we don't draw aura, we're in a better spot. It doesn't add anything to our clock playing it this turn. Um, that and, you know, Savage Swipe doesn't work with Rancor, so we'd be disabling our Savage Swipe. Uh. Important to note, this is also only sorcery speed. You can't do this instant speed, guys. <clears throat> Um, and you should also, uh, note that with Savage Swipe, just do one damage to himself then, that seems odd. Alright, cool, that's a really good draw. Uh, so now we can go Ethereal Armor. Um, Savage Swipe will make these counters go on our creature, but, uh, it's gonna be worth it anyway. We're gonna get the toughness off of our, uh, Rancor and our... Uh, way line buffing the ethereal armor there so there we go S really really rewarded for slow rolling the uh, savage swipe there oh sorry slow rolling the rancor enabling our savage swipe Oh, that's quite interesting, actually. It applies... The... I don't think it applied the 2-2. Um, uh, here, I'm not even sure I want to run out my creatures into my opponent. Um, you're just giving him fodder to target burn spells at, and I, that's not something I want to be doing. So, if he runs his burn spells out, he'll trigger his prowess, all of that. Like, that doesn't seem very good to me. If I want to play it, I'll play it on my terms, during my turn when I can get a draw trigger off of it. <clears throat> Alright, so Leyline is very good. We get there. Without ever revealing the uh, Core Spirit Dancer, which I think everyone probably knew was in hand. So we're going to take out these Core Spirit Dancers here. We're going to bring in our Path to Exiles. They're going to be very important. Um, what else do we want against Prowess? Uh, they do bring in Blood Moon, so we will want some number of Force of Vigor. Maybe not the full four. Um, Stony Silence could be good against their Mishra's Bobble, uh, but that's about it. Our Rest in Peace is actually really good here. Uh, I value that quite a bit above the Force of Vigors. Might take out Savage Swipe. Leave in one Force of Vigor, I suppose. One Savage Swipe out. Yeah, that seems fine. Let's go that. <coughs> The deck operates really highly off of their creatures, so even if our creature removal hurts our creature by making it smaller or something, um, I still think it's worthwhile. Alright, yeah, this is great. We'll keep this. <laughs> We've had some uh, gas hands this league. And even against our Jund opponent uh, last match, <laughs> even when our hand was not gas, we drew into gas and it was fine. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what is... Uh, thought process was with his discard, like if he had double abrupt decay or something, it might have made a bit more sense, or some Lilianas, but like, yeah, taking creature from my opponent made no sense, like our 1-1s did nothing against him, um, and he just, I don't know, took, took one of our three creatures, and like, it, yeah. 
allowed us to have as many auras on the board as possible. Um, have the bigger creature attack win. But yeah, we did draw very well. Um, Alright, so... Opponent's got crashed through here. Yep, they, they're going to be dealing a little bit of damage to us. We do have ley lines, so we can't take damage from spells. Not yet. Misha's bubble as well. Yep. <clears throat> Six damage. Pretty scary. Uh, down to three cards in hand, though. If they blood moon, we can uh, force a vigor pitch the rancor. So we're just going to take this. Hopefully draw into a land that doesn't deal us too much damage. Alright, we miss on our land drop. Let's just get in, attack. Maybe we draw out one of Sentinel's Eyes so we ha can have our Vigilance happening. Um, <clears throat> maybe Leyline's just good enough to get us there, maybe not. Prowess is pretty strong. So we've got 16 green sources, oh sorry, 17 green sources left in our deck, counting the Dried Arbor. Um, could be worth playing out Rancor just for the extra point of damage here. Opponent's taking a while with his turn, so he is thinking about something at the moment. Maybe he's doing a bit of math. Alright, so he's cast two Lava Darts. He can flash back two Lava Darts now if he chooses. Uh, that's going to be a big old attack for eight. Imagine how stuffed we'd be without this Ley Line right now. <laughs> we'd just be dead. Um... Jam, rest in peace here. Alright. Take one point of damage to jam the rest in peace. Uh, here I almost think we hold up jump blocker. And wait to draw a ley line. Slowly add to our board. <clears throat> I wait to day draw daybreak, pardon me. Alright, alright, let's go. He's not got it. He's not got it. Okay. Woo. Uh, well, we're dead if we don't block, so. <laughs> alright, we go to two. <laughs> Come on, daybreak. <laughs> it's not a daybreak, but it's pretty good. Um. Go like this and pass the turn. We're down to one. <laughs> this is a, a very scary spot to be in, but I uh, would be down to one regardless almost. Maybe we just play the scout of the bogle as a chump blocker. Um, we need to draw a source, a white source that doesn't deal us damage and then land, or just enough auras so that we can just attack in one attack and win. Uh, it's not a great spot to be in here, but. Alright, well there's a Lava Dart. So we're going to lose one of our creatures. I'll lose the Totem Armor at least. Um, yep. 
Oh, that's pretty good. How do we want to proceed here? Do we just rank or attack for seven? Chump block. Yeah, that seems pretty good to me. And then... As long as he doesn't draw Monastery Swift Spear, we win. This is line loses to Monastery Swift Spear. <sighs> yikes, 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 yikes. <laughs> Alright, he's played Mountain. I'm pretty sure that means he drew Mountain that turn. Uh, have we got that? <laughs> That is the question. <laughs> okay. Looks like we got there. Uh, yep. We're just going to attack with both here. Uh, I should have passed in response then. He's going to one. That was silly. Alright, let's just tot up our path to exile here, in case he does something funky, but I think we've got it. Well, that was a very tense game. Holy cow. <laughs> Alright, our opponent chooses death. Respect. Mad respect. Alright. Holy moly, that went down to the wire. <laughs> yep, Mono Red Prowess is a very, very scary deck, and uh, we got very fortunate there. The, the rest in peace, like, drawing that when we did and playing it when we did, that was absolutely clutch. We would have lost if we didn't do that. Um... So yeah, happy, very happy bringing in that Graveyard Hate against this deck that runs that ridiculous Lava Spike. Like, honestly, Lava Spike's so dumb. That and, um, because Lurus has been nerfed so hard now, they might actually go back to playing Bedlam Reveler, and then that will shut off Bedlam Reveler as well. Um, so yeah, yeah, really, I think, I think that was a correct decision. Um... <laughs> Alright, we won the Dyrrell this time. Uh, Batutina is our opponent for this match. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, keep, I think. It's pretty, pretty fragile looking core Spirit Dancer, but our aura package is good. We've got interaction via the Savage Swipe. Um, if we're reversing something like Ponza, uh, at least we can... We've got... A basic land here we can cast our savage swipe if we ever resolve like an aura in our creature kill the magus of the moon um kill the arbor elf all of that yeah i feel like it's a little bit of a coin flip but i feel like it is a key <laughs> so temple garden pass Inspiring Vantage. So this looks like Burn. It is Burn. Okay. Uh, we've drawn Horizon Canopy. Drew Daybreak off the top. Okay. So I feel like here we just want to turn 3 Core Spirit Dancer, Ethereal Armor to give it the toughness, and hope it survives after that. We haven't dealt any damage to ourselves yet, so we can be a little bit patient. Alright, opponent's gone hard on the creatures. Uh, we reveal scout, so I feel a lot happier going in on the scout here. Um, let's play scout, play ethereal armor, kill his swift spear while we can, and then leave up chump blocks for... Do we leave up chump blocks? Yeah. Oh, we can't even attack. We don't have haste. I'm, I'm stupid. Sorry, guys. 
<sighs> charm blocking here into a Boros charm would be bad. Although I think we have to jump block. Uh, what do we reveal off the top of our library? Core Spirit Dancer. Okay. I think we have to jump block and hope he doesn't have Boros Charm. We're just dead to way too much if we don't. Alright. No Boros Charm. Skewer the Critics. Yep. If our opponent puts us to one, that's going to be a little troublesome. Alright, I'm just going to attack here. Uh, I might pay, play Ethereal Armor post-combat. But, yeah. I don't want to take any extra damage than what I have to. Alright, so. <sighs> Dead to any burn spell now. Skull crack OP. Alright. So, that is the new fancy old lightning bolt here. Yep, so we lose the game one against our burn opponent. We're going on to game two here. Um, do I prefer path or savage swipe? I think I prefer savage swipe. Maybe I prefer both. Um, I think core spirit dancer just doesn't seem very good to me here, especially since the printing of skewer the critics. Um, just that extra, like, can damage a creature spell. Seems pretty bad for us. Um, yeah, so two path in for the creatures. Two force in for the Eidolons and potentially Blood Moon. Although, I don't think the Boros deck runs Blood Moon because it shuts off too many of their own cards. Interesting that they're running Skullcrack over something like Lightning Helix, considering Mono Red Prowess is around, and you'd think the life gain from Lightning Helix would be more relevant than stopping opponents from main deck gaining life. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure what that's about. Not sure it's correct. Um... Alright, so we're on the play here. Um, we don't have our lands to curve out. Our land also deals damage to us. No Ley Line. No Life Link. Uh, I think we have to get rid of this. Alright, this looks like a million times better. I'm going to keep this any day of the dang week. Uh, we'll run out the Razor Verge Thicket first. If we draw a white source next turn, we can go double aura. <clears throat> yep, seems pretty good to me. Maybe he even uh, Goblin Guides and we draw the white soft source off the trigger. That would be pretty nice also. Alright, it's a Swift Spear, no guide. Alright, no guide, no white mana. Uh, Alright. Uh, we're never going to be blocking a Swiss Spear with a 2-2 no totem armor. Let's get in for 2 damage here. Alright, opponent's got Sunbait Canyon, Fiery Islet. They're going to be dealing a lot of damage to themselves. Triple Swiss Spear. Whew. We might be taking a bit of damage next turn. Hopefully land. Alright, no land. We do get Grisburn though. Do I just throw away this Bogle as a chump blocker at this point? Maybe, maybe not. I guess we see what they do. I feel like it's getting thrown away at this point. <laughs> Skewer the critics, you got it. Yikes, that was aggressive. Holy moly. Okay, come on land. Come on land. Alright, we get there. Let's go team. Gross stuff. 
Alright, we've put him to one. He can't cast any spells anymore. <laughs> oh no, he saw the uh, cast a spell line. Um, I think we're still pretty good here. Alright, we get the win. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Uh, we're going to run the same deck back. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, at the moment, with the uh, way everything's gone in Australia, a lot of stuff started opening back up, sports started happening again, uh, I'm going to be spending a bit more time at soccer, I'm going to try and uh, get the comments happening, um, all the content, all of that for you guys. Um, if some videos come up a little bit late and everything, just, yeah, be a little bit understanding. Uh, so, no double white, no daybreak, but Leyline OP, we're going to keep this. Uh, da -da. done deal. Oh, Goblin Guard. Show me that sweet land, Goblin Guard. Savage Swipe. Alright. Well, Savage Swipe is going to be pretty good with our hand here. I'm not going to lie. Get to kill one of his creatures. Hopefully no Eidolon. Eidolon would be gross. Alright, Swiss Spear is fine. Force of Vigor on top. Alright. Opponent knows what's up. Uh, let's get rid of this uh, Swiss Spear. It doesn't uh, filter us to spells. And it has the potential to deal a lot more than two damage for quite a few turns in a row. I absolutely love the tempo of Savage Swipe. I know everyone already knows how much of a fan I am of the card, but yeah. Feels really good uh, killing killing his guy, getting to deal 4 damage. It's really good. Double Strike. Okay. Uh, yep. Sure. So Daybreak on top. Uh, so now we're just drawing to a white mana source. And then we'll be Hunky Dory. After that, our right, opponent's got the Sacred Foundry there, so obviously no Blood Moon, but still Eidolon is an issue, so Force of Vigor can be good. Um, yep. We got a Chump Blocker here. We can keep attacking in the air on the other guy. That's all fine. I think they do know about the Daybreak. I think it got uh, revealed off the Goblin Guard. Alright, so opponents conceding there. Uh, our next card was the land we needed to Daybreak and win. So that's pretty good. Uh, nice, easy victory against Burn there. Nice textbook victory, I should say. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think I think Savage Swipe showed a decent amount of worth there, and we we all know how good Leyline is, how good Life Link is, um, Daybreak Coronet, all of that. We didn't see the Eidolon of the Great Revel then, which was a bit interesting, but that's fine. All right, we won the die roll again, so that's our first two matches we lost it. Our second two we've won it. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and keep this opponent on Lurus. I wonder what they're doing with that Lurus. Um. So yeah, this hand's a little bit weak to disruption or interaction on the board. Uh, Daybreak could very easily fall into the bin. But, like, there's a lot of strength in this hand. Uh, if we draw any one aura off the top, like, we're in a really good spot. Opponent's mulling into six. <clears throat> I wonder if this is the Devoted Company deck. Because they have, like, enough mana that, like, Lurus doesn't matter, right? <sighs> <laughs> Burgle go. Burgle go. <laughs> I 
Oh, discard? No, opponent, why you do this? Alright, they're probably going to take the Daybreak Coronet. I wonder if this is still a Jun deck. All right, Griff, Griff Spoon to the bin. We draw a Core Spirit Dancer. Um, pretty tempted to just run out the Core Spirit Dancer here. Even if they have removal, maybe it's Assassin's Trophy and it ramps us a little bit, thins our deck, something like that. Um, yeah. I mean, like, Fatal Push just gets it quite cleanly, but what you gonna do? Golding Tarn. This is like Grixis Control or something. I don't think it would be Death Shadow. I think it has to be heavier on permission than that. Alright, so we got Grixis here. Croxa? Alright, well, we just got a Bogle. That's gonna be okay. Alright, we draw the Rancor. Um. It would be a fast o'clock if we go on Encore Spirit Dancer, but she's just too fragile. We know we got the Daybreak in hand. Alright, we draw a Scout. We'll play the Bogle that they know about, just to get it on the field. Attack for three. Next turn we can Daybreak. That'll all be pretty nice. And then we won't have to worry about this Croxer anymore at that point. <sighs> Blue. Some sort of Serum Visions, maybe? Thought Scout, gotcha. Alright, so it's a Death Shadow deck. Uh, Grixis Death Shadow running Lurus still, apparently. Lurus and Croxa. Yikes. Croxa has really good synergy with Lurus, hey? <laughs> I mean, I guess it, it strips stuff out of your graveyard, but it's still a really good card there. Alright, there's the Death Shadow. Um, let's play out our Rancor here. Hopefully we draw land and then we can... Uh, daybreak if we do all right we do draw a land I'm a little bit concerned about stubborn denial here but I think we run what we're doing into it anyway the upside does seem high enough Uh, I smell a stubborn denial, guys. I smell a stubborn denial. Yep. Alright. Uh, we already drew land for this turn, so we can't play that one. Uh, good news is opponent can't really attack unless he's got another creature to play. Is this four to return? I think it's four. Yeah. He needs double red as well. Oh. Alright, he's got the fourth land. He's fast running out of resources though. Oh, actually, uh, we're one mana off of returning Grisburn and just attacking in the air here. Uh, we have to slow roll this Razor Verge thicker, unfortunately. Uh, so Team of Battle Rage still won't kill us, so we'll just take the damage. It looks like he's just going to Crocs her end of turn. Alright, so even though we... I think we discard the Glade Cover Scout here, even though we're not guaranteed anything uh, with Razor Verge Thicket. Alright, we draw the Windswept Teeth. Uh, get Grisboon back, attack for six. <laughs> Died a team of Battle Rage. <laughs> Double chump lock. 
Uh, yeah. All right. <laughs> yikes, 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 yikes. All right. Looks like we're going to get to block here. Uh, dead to lightning bolt as well. All right, are we getting there? Oh no, Croxer, does that make us lose three life? Damn, GG. <laughs> oh no. No. <laughs> Gosh darn it. That was really close. That was really, really close. Um, if we had one extra life there. Holy cow. Hyena Umbra on top. Damn, so we, we could have cycled the Horizon Canopy, drawn into Hyena Umbra, Hyena Umbra on the Bogle to make it a 6-6 six, six still, potentially drawn another Aura, and then one. Um, so I think maybe our line was... I don't know, we are losing to a lot at that stage, but maybe our line was a little suboptimal. Uh, so it's Death Shadow, so we're going to want our Rest in Peace. We're going to want our uh, Path to Exiles here. Savage Swipe does not seem very good to me in this matchup. Um, uh, we're on the play. We might just get them with Suppression Field as well. Hmm. Maybe Suppression Field's a little bit too much because I'm running out of stuff to take out. Um... Yeah, all right. Take out one core. I feel like we still want to have a large number of core in the deck, even if it dies to stuff because it draws us cards. Um, yes, yeah, wait, this hand's awesome. Let's go. <laughs> uh, even if they do something like Plague Engineer, we've got a little bit of resilience against it. Because uh, we got an extra toughness, we got a different creature type. I think it's more the Jun decks that run that, so we probably don't have to worry about it. But, you know, people always just do something really funky. Um, stuff this, let's play post Poster Boy. <laughs> if I see a Grixis Death Shadow deck running Spreading Seas, I'm going to be very, very surprised. <laughs> it's like the one reason why you wouldn't want to play out Slippery Bogle. Um, that and... Uh, Soldier of the Pantheon, like something with protection from multicolor or something like that. But like, these cards don't see plays. We should we should just pivot around our poster boy way more often, right? <laughs> oh dang! So looks like no Death Shadow, no discard there. Sweet. All right, let's get our stuff happening here. We got our Totem Armor. Uh, we've got our Flying. Both those things are resolved and on the field. We're going to attack for three. Get that clock happening. <clears throat> Alright. Here's the Thought Seas. The Turn 2 Thought Seas. Uh... <laughs> Gonna be taking this daybreak here. <clears throat> Little unfortunate, but you know that's that's what happened. All right, let's just play out our hand. Uh, we'll play around stubborn denial by doing it this way. I don't know. Maybe I could have. Fetch basic planes and saved a point of life there. Actually, that that's a little bit loose. Uh, played the high number off the planes. Yeah, I th think I just took one point of unnecessary damage then. Still think we're in a reasonable sh like spot to just win this match, but yeah. See what our opponent does. I don't think they got Death Shadow just from the way they did their turn one, Water Grave and Tapped. Maybe they've drawn it since, but... 
I think maybe they're a permission heavy hand at the moment, you know, drown in the lock, uh, fatal push, um, stubborn denial, all, the, all of that stuff. Good girl. Huh? <laughs> Making grumpy dog noises. Mm. Alright, so my opponent's just jammed the croc, so we can't discard anything. We take a little bit of damage there. Uh, we're going to go ahead and cycle. Uh, might as well cycle into the temple garden, although... I don't think dried arbor is needed, because we've got the scout here. Uh, yep, so we'll go ahead and get rid of this one as well. I don't think they can deal the instant speed damage to us, so... Fetching, Cycling, Horizon Canopy here seems fine to me. Uh, Alright, we're just flooding out pretty badly here. Get in, put him to four. We've got a flying creature, we can just kill him next turn, right? I think we've got everything we need there on the board. Isn't that right? So, he targeted the top of his library there, which is interesting. I think it means he's got a decision, because if he didn't have a decision to make, he would just be going for uh, more knowledge of something I've potentially sideboarded in, or a main deck inclusion. Um. Alright, so it looks like we've got this one in the bag. That's the strength of Griffspoon there. Um, Grispoon, very, very good. <laughs> I think I'm just happy running the same list back as well. Yeah, let's just run the same list back. I'm half considering Suppression Field, but we all know that's better on the play than on the draw. Um, okay, this hand looks good. We're going to keep this. Uh, this hand looks really good, actually. It's one weakness is, like, the forest in hand, and but the, the hand's so good that that doesn't even matter, really. <clears throat> Really hoping to see Aura off the top of our library here. Um, Leyline Protection against Death Shadow. Let's go, guys. Let's go. That's what I'm about. Pretty interesting that he's running Lurus over having like just Street Wraith in a 56 card deck and more synergy between the Bobble and the Fetch lands that they've got. Okay, so Engineered Explosives is a pretty good card. What are we drawing? Rancor. No, oh, that's not too bad, really. Hopefully he does something proactive with his turn so I can get in for 5 here. Uh, looks like he's just passing to me though. Uh, that seems decent. Let's uh, see if he cycles this to make us lose Rancor forever. Alright, looks like he's going to make Rancor go to the bin here. Then we can just play our second scout, say go. Yep, alright, so that's fine. So he gets a nice clean 2 for 1 there. Rancor's down, but that's okay. We've got another Rancor in hand. We've got another Scout in hand. Uh, we, will, we will rebuild 
And because of Luris' nerf, he can't just uh, get this whole interaction going way faster than he otherwise would. Uh, so maybe, yeah, maybe we wanted the one-off Stony Silence from our sideboard there. Probably for an another Core Spirit Dancer, but that's fine. That is absolutely fine. Still in a really good spot here. <clears throat> like, we're still under absolutely no pressure and, like, ready to pile on stacks of pressure, right? <clears throat> hmm. Another line we could have done then is path our own scout in response to the explosives trigger, get an extra land out for next turn. I don't think it's good. I think we just want the path for, you know, path Croxer, path um, Death Shadow. But yeah, it's, it's something to consider. Uh, I think we... I think we want the path. I think we get rid of the core. Alright, we get punished. Um, so land, Rancor. If he goes to recast Crocs to this turn, with the trigger on the stack, we can at least path Crocs and get rid of it. Although, if he's got Stubborn Denial... Oh, wait, no, he needs to curve out for exactly 4 mana. <clears throat> Can't really cycle the Horizon Canopy here as well because of this forest. Uh, Thought Scout him. He's got the Unearth. Um, hmm. Intriguing. Alright, here comes Croxer. Let's path it. Um, so yeah, we get sort of punished by the Core Spirit Dancer line there. Um, but at the same time, it was way safer because we just had a guaranteed this. Like, we didn't have the guaranteed Horizon Canopy, but we did have the guaranteed path is Croxer, which he was very likely to... Um, cast into. Oh, sweet! Of all the good draws, I'm very happy to see this one. Holy cow. Jam that thing like there's no tomorrow. Goodbye, rest in peace. A goodbye, engineered... Sorry, goodbye, engineered explosives. Alright, one aura off of winning this. Attack for three. <laughs> So we definitely want to play out this scout. If he plays chump blockers... Oh, Snapcaster Mage? Wow. Okay, well, we're going to trample two. We do have the other creature to go in on here. Double Snapcaster Mage. Holy moly. We're going to lose our Rancor permanently here. Alright, if that's his blockers, we're going to cycle this, look for a path. No path. Rats. Alright, we're going to put him to two. We've got the other scout to play second main. Hot dang, Snapcaster Mages. That is scary as. <laughs> you can even, like, unearth Croxer as well, in case anyone's packing Terminates over Fatal Push and, uh, as, and uh, I guess Assassin's Trophy. Um, we'll put it into the grave as well. <clears throat> Yikes, this is a very tight game. <laughs> Absolute nail biters these last two games against this opponent and against the uh, Mono Red Prayos opponent. <sighs> We've got him down to one. Uh, looks like Lurus is going to hand and onto the field. Alright, Grisburn for the win. Ah, oh, yikes. 
yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is not good, guys. <laughs> We're going to start losing three life, and he's going to start gaining three life every turn now. Uh, we hit Our draws have not been particularly good, with the exception of that rest in phase. Um, like, ley lines are really bad. We just... Uh, we've got nothing solid going here. I don't know. Uh, he's just attacking for five, and, you know, why not? <laughs> uh, yikes, yikes, yikes. I guess the good news is we can pay for Stubborn Denial, and if we draw white now... That Rancor's a really good draw. Um, put our opponent right back to one. Any first strike aura and any land, like white land, and we win. So we got a lot of draws now after drawing rank all that turn. That's uh, really solid. Oh, he milled two death shadows. That's gonna sting, man. Those are really unlucky mills. Holy moly. Let's see land. We can beat one stubborn denial there, but not two. Oh, god damn it. Ugh. I hate you, Leyland. Stop. <laughs> Stop being on the top of our library. We've only got four Leylands in the deck. And we, draw, we have one of them in our opening hand. We draw two of the three. And we got how many white lands in the deck? Oh, no. This is so agonizing. <laughs> Ugh. This is game three as well. <laughs> Holy moly. My opponent has a lot more to think about with their attacks than what we do, um, but like, yeah. Oh, just attacking with Snapcaster Mage, that's a little bit interesting. What could that mean? Mon land. oh, far out, go away. I think he's probably got another Snapcaster Mage in hand if that's what he did. Uh, we got chump blocker mode now on the Bogle. Um, we draw no first strike auras this game. Yeah, we draw no first strike auras. We had one rancor and we drew the other two, but no first strike auras. It's a little bit frustrating. Alright, we're gonna just chump this Snapcaster Mage here. That's fine. Take three. Alright, one more chance. Let's get that land happening. Uh, if he Croxes, it's fine. We just got Leyline, right? <laughs> Discard Leyline. Oh, goodness gracious. Don't do this to me, deck. Holy moly. Alright, we're dead to Team of Battle Rage anyway, so... Let's get in there. Now we need to draw, like, exactly planes or something like Ethereal Armor, which adds, like, a lot of damage. Uh, he didn't have a Counterspell for Grisburn. Alright, we're on one. Come on, deck. Opponent on cleanup. God damn it. <laughs> Why do you have to be a turn too late, man? Alright, we're on chump blocking duty. <laughs> chump blocking duty into draw creature, reset and go again. This is so not good. Ugh. 
Yeah, our, our top decks have not been good this game. At all. At all. I wonder if he's holding Fatal Pushes as well. well. we got a lot of auras now. If we draw a creature, we've pretty much guaranteed the win, almost. Uh, unless he draws, you know, Snapcaster Mage or something. Um, but we can chump block Snapcaster Mage. We can discard twice for Croxes, like... Twice for free against Croxer. Really just need the top of our library to be kind. We can't even draw a fetch land. Holy moly. No, don't do it, opponent. Alright, that's fine. Alright, we can't crack that fetch land unless we gain a lot of life off Daybreak Coronet. <sighs> of all of, like, just... Like, this is just so pathetic. <laughs> We've had two really good games, and this game was really good and interactive, and both of us are just drawing rubbish and unable to do anything. Uh, go away! Give me a creature. <laughs> Maybe I should have pulled the pin on chump blocking the Lurus earlier. <laughs> uh, Alright, we got it. Fucking hell. Holy moly. Whew. Uh, he might, you know, stop and denial this or something and we can't pay for it, but whatever. It'll be one stop and denial out of his hand and then clear the way for Daybreak Coronet. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We, we knew that that could happen. Absolutely fine with that. Daybreak's the important one to resolve. I mean, uh, arguably that's more important. And, like, he's got Death Shadow potentially. Yeah, we, we should have played the, um... We should have played the Griff Spoon first. I think we played those backwards. But then if he draws, like, Engineered Explosives, our line was way better as well, so... Yeah. Yeah. Alright, let's get this uh, Daybreak Coronet out there doing its stuff. <sighs> alright, alright. We're no longer on one life. Thank goodness. Alright, we'll put this down tapped. Pass to our opponent. Okay. Okay, we're doing it. We're getting there. Alright, I think that's his forced myth is bo Misha's bubble now. Uh, just developed a bit of a lisp then for all of that. <laughs> uh, a little bit excited at the moment, because, uh, yeah, okay, we got there. Holy cow. Uh, well, that's not, like, a good game to win, but, yeah, like, I I'd prefer to win not off of, like, a really stalled out board state and lackluster finish there, but I'm still really happy to get the victory. Um... <laughs> Yeah, so that is 4-0 right now. I'm pretty happy about that. We've recovered our result from the league so far. We'll see how round 5 goes. Okay, we are back here for round 5. We lost the die roll. Uh, this hand is not good enough. We are throwing it back. Wiltron 92. I wonder if he's on Tron. Um... I think we have to keep this. 
and bottom the daybreak and hope. Being on the die roll here really sucks. Alright, Verdant Catacombs, we might have dodged a bullet. Hopefully we can turn 3 this Core Spirit Dancer um, and get some Totem Armor protection happening. Uh, we haven't drawn any auras, but my opponent's not putting us any under any pressure. I might as well go for one more turn before I try to um, play Core. Cool. Hopefully get that land. Is this a Death Shadow opponent? No. Maybe. Alright, we could be up against Traverse Shadow here. Oh, yikes. Assassin's Trophy. Okay, well that's uh, going to be pretty good. We do hit the land drop here, but I have a feeling like there's going to be a discard spell. <clears throat> Damn. Alright. Assassin's Trophy OP. Uh, he was going to get that anyway. Now he has information on our hand, though. Um, like, because if we played the Core Spirit Dancer, he would have just Assassin's trophy the Core Spirit Dancer, right? <clears throat> Alright, let's go ahead and cycle this Horizon Canopy. It's It puts us off of double white, but we need to draw creatures. Uh, if we draw a fetch land, we can Dried Arbor as well. Game is definitely not over yet. Opponent's life total getting low. We've got Grispoon to fly over the top two. Alright, this is definitely Traverse Shadow. That's four colours now. <laughs> well, we are winning the race. Uh, they're down to nine. Uh, but, uh, yeah, we're doing a whole bunch of not very much at the moment. Fine, <laughs> it's uh, got a bit of a sense of humor here. <laughs> this is magic. Yep. Yeah, I hear you, buddy. I hear you. <laughs> They're probably holding some more assassins trophies or um, like abrupt decays in hand. Uh, if we do have a draw creature, though, we have so many auras in hand to get going here. Um, I guess maybe he was slow rolling the traverse so that he could guarantee a death shadow as well. All right, let's let's pray and hope for our friend Core Spirit Dancer to do the thing. Could be met by a swift fatal push here. Okay, fatal uh, high number is going to resolve. That's really really good. Okay, I'm happy with that. Uh, he could be running like drown in the lock in hand, and that's why he couldn't uh, do that. So he's probably going to take Grispoon here, but I think we have enough to win off of rank or daybreak sort of stuff. Okay, he's taking a daybreak. Interesting. We can just rank or Grispoon attack win. Uh, we can even just Grispoon attack win, but we want to play the Rancor as well, so we're not dead to one removal spell. We're dead to two. Yep, Rancor. <laughs> uh, we didn't draw land. We got a second core spirit dancer. I think we still play the Griff Spoon, attack off of just that, and don't play any other auras. Maybe we draw a land. Um, uh, 
as well. Mm, he might have the stubborn denial here, since he's uh, tanked a little bit with the decision making. Yeah, there's the stubborn denial. See what we draw off the trigger here. Razor Verge Thicket, not the nicest. Alright, we do have to play our Ethereal Armor now. Alright. Let's attack. Uh, we'll deal all 12 points of damage to the Death Shadow, probably. Alright, so he's got double strike. Um, I don't think that's going to do anything. Let's just get this up to 12. Make sure we get rid of his creature. We're not that concerned about dealing damage there. Next turn we can have a really powerful attack. Cool. Alright, we get that. Alright, cool, 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 cool. Ah, uh, very happy about that. Alright, so, Traverse Shadow, so Rest in Peace is going to be good here. Path is going to be good here. So this is going to shut off his Traverse Delirium stuff, um, as well as whatever else it does. Um, Alright, Path is going to be strong. I don't think this opponent was running Lurus so there's less likelihood of the engine it explosives uh, I think core spirit dancer out one core spirit dancer out is fine keep the rest I don't even know if it's spelled biter right then it might be GHT I don't know <laughs> I'm not very good at spelling in case you guys have noticed um, <laughs> my secret shame alright let's uh, mulligan this hand this hand's good we'll keep it Difficult um, discard decision. I think the correct one is one path to exile. You don't want to discard the hexproof creature there because then you just lose to one discard spell. Um, which they're almost guaranteed to have, um, especially when it's against us. Like it's like it's like eighty percent of the time, hundred percent of the time, all the time. Yeah, I, I butchered the Anchorman quote, but whatever. Um, <laughs> You'll get what I mean. Alright. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Alright, alright. I just almost skipped through my turn then. Holy moly. I hit two uh, to the Misha's bubble trigger. Do not want to lose our turn there. No, we do not. All right. All right. Thought series is probably going to take the path. We've got a million ethereal armors. So. Okay, he took ethereal armor. Interesting. Oh, another, another thought series. Gotcha. Uh, I'll play Grispoon any day of the week there. Uh... I think we have to attack, although it does get them closer to their Death Shadow, and we don't really have that much pressure right now. Um, their life total is very low. Very, very low. I 
I think we have a few lines here, but it's going to require us ripping a white mana source off the top of our library and him not making us discard. Alright, we win. Cool. Guys, that was the 5-0. Um, awesome. Awesome. I haven't gotten one of those in a while. Holy cow. I'm very surprised that game was over there. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Okay. Um... So, triple discard, double Misha's Bobble, Street Wraith, and I guess he drew nothing. Um, so, okay, we were drawing the land on top of our library. Um, so, the reason I say we had a few decisions there was if he, like, Death Shadow. Uh, the Death Shadow is obviously giving his Stubborn Dial ferocity. So, the line would be path the Death Shadow um, to make way for Ethereal Armor. Cast Ethereal Armor, fly over the top for the win. Uh, if you do it in the other order, you don't guarantee the victory. Um, but yeah, no, look, very happy with that. That's awesome. Uh, deck list did well. Um, we got the play points. We got the prizes, all of that. Uh, we didn't see too much action out of Torpor Orb, Stony Silence, Gadok Teague, or Force. Uh, but we saw a lot of action for Leyline. Leyline was a superstar in the main deck. Savage Swipe did a decent amount of work for us as well. Um, and yeah, that's the list. Uh, I'm extremely happy with it and how it performed, especially how the last few leagues we've done have gone. Um, I I'm just going to run the same league back tomorrow, guys, um, because I think it's a good list. Um, and yeah happy with that um hope hope to see the deck uh, perform as well tomorrow or if not close to um if you enjoyed the video guys uh uh please uh leave a like or a comment below to help with the youtube algorithm and growing the channel if you're new to the channel and want to see daily boogles content uh be sure to uh follow me or subscribe or whatever it's called i don't know uh other than that uh, thanks for watching till the very end and i hope to see you all tomorrow